Welcome to Tales of Marketing Transformation, laying firm foundations for your marketing journey. Tune out all the black magic and imagine a time where marketing has transformed into something human. Where marketing is about building relationships with people you serve. Where marketing is about helping people. That time is now. This is Tales of Marketing Transformation. And here's your host, internationally recognized marketer, speaker, and podcaster, Dr. Jürgen Strauss. Hello, and thanks for joining me on this quest to make marketing human again. Today's another podcasting episode where I'll share some tips and ideas from our extensive experience in podcasting, over seven years of producing our own podcasts as well as producing them for our clients. Recently, I had the privilege of appearing on a panel discussion entitled How to Create a Phenomenal Guest Experience. That was part of PodThon 21, which is a two-day virtual event where podcasters can learn from and connect with thought leaders in the podcasting community. Today, I'm going to share part of that panel discussion focused on, in particular, what podcast hosts look for. Head on over to talesofmarketingtransformation.com for the show notes to this episode and a link to the PodThon 21 event itself, although it is over and you won't have access to the recordings anymore unless you purchased a ticket in advance. So pay careful attention to what I share today. In this conversation, my fellow panel members are Bethany Hawkins of the Chatting Over Chowder podcast and Lucas Egan of the LAN Parties podcast. And I've chosen an excerpt of the conversation that focuses on what we as podcast hosts expect of our guests. Whether you're a podcast host or would like to be a guest on podcasts, there is something in this conversation for you. Let's listen to that conversation. I want to start off with the idea that people's guest journey begins when they hit record. And I... (laughs) And I can already see that you're going to slap it <laughs> because we all know that, that is not the case. So, Lucas, tell me when the guest ex- journey should begin when somebody is ready to book or, tr- or you are asking somebody to be a guest on your podcast. You said it right there. It begins the moment you're ready to reach out to them. Your guest experience is going to be determined by the language you use when you reach out to them whether if they have somebody in charge of booking their schedule, if you're going through the right channels for them, because it saves them stress and and annoyance and frustration and that kind of stuff. So their journey begins the moment you decide that person is somebody I want to have on my show. And from that moment on, you're representing your podcast, your brand, yourself, and you have to be on point and not stumble into it. And you're good. Do you agree with Lucas? And that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. For me, I'll come back to this over and over during this conversation, but it's all around the relationship and it's, it's the journey. Like I liken it to a customer journey and it's the very first touch point is the beginning of the journey. And that's where, as Lucas said, you have to represent your brand. You have to create the exceptional experience right from that very first touch point. I agree. And with my podcast, it, it has been really fun because the first 18 people were people that I all had a relationship with. So I was at an advantage because we already had a rapport. I already knew the amazing information that they were going to carry onto my podcast. So being able to understand how people speak, how people engage, the information that they're going to offer truly is the first step in having that great guest experience because if you know how they move and operate in the world, you know how to market the fact that they're going to be on there. You know how to hype them up so that they have great energy to be on that podcast episode. So for people that 
fill out a job form or reach out to you that you don't know well. How do you go about, for lack of a better term, vetting them for your podcast to be a guest? Jurgen. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think it's really important because one of the things that I say is that I, I have a really good relationship with my audience, my podcast audience. So I'm going to protect that relationship at all costs, which means that every pitch I get, I don't accept that pitch. So they've got to convince me that they're going to bring value to the podcast if they're pitching me. Obviously, if I'm reaching out to people, I've already made that decision. So then it's up to me to pitch to them and to tell them how will I provide them value? Why should they come on my podcast? And the curating process, I get lots of requests to come on the show, probably about five or six every week. And I probably only accept one or two a month that come in. I have a standard uh, letter basically that I send people. So I, I'm not a fan of templated stuff, but this is a very uh, personalized kind of templated thing, if you like. It contains a video of me explaining what I'm looking for in a guest coming in. It explains the steps that I expect a guest to take to come on. So right from that first touch point, they're getting to see me as a real professional, as somebody that really cares about my audience, as somebody that cares about my relationship with my guest. So I'm kind of building that relationship straight away. And anyone that doesn't respond to that or engage with me on that after they've pitched me, they're already have disqualified themselves. So it saves me a bit of work. People that come back then and say, yeah, we'd like to get involved and here's how we can get involved. So they, they usually fill out a questionnaire, which I've given them, which I ask them, why should I take you on the podcast? What value are you going to add to my audience and how are you going to help me promote it? And what can I do for you? So it's the two way thing, the relationship thing. And if people take the time to fill that out, then I will give them a personalized response back. Doesn't mean that I'll accept them. And I've made that clear in, in the request but I will give them a personalized response back that says, hey, we'd love to have you come on the show. Here's the next steps. Or look, I don't think you're a really good fit. I don't think it fits into the categories that we're looking for. Here's some other suggestions, but sorry on this occasion, we can't accept you. You brought so many amazing points to that. Lucas, that. tell me about how people reach out to you because you have a very specific podcast regarding I do, I do, yeah. So we're solely focused on video games. And so when people reach out to uh, us, what I'm looking for is what kind of crossover will there be? And as Jurgen mentioned, this isn't just send me an email saying, will you come on my show? Leave it at that and hope and pray. They need to show value. There needs to be mutual value on going forward and why you want to appear on somebody's show. And you know what I'm looking for if they've done any research on me besides they know that I have a podcast. Uh, I'm looking for how long have they been doing it? Has it been at least regular for a li at least a little while? Is this something that somebody's just grasping at straws? Are they sending out an email to a hundred people and just waiting for somebody to get back and say yes? <clears throat> and so those kinds of things. And I just kind of look at it from how we try and pitch our guests. Because we deal with people in the gaming industry, <clears throat> they have very busy schedules. They're getting booked to either act, write, direct, develop, all that kind of stuff. So you have to very concisely say, this is what we can offer you. This is why you should take an hour out of your schedule to come talk to us. And they don't have that much time. They don't have that much time in the day. And generally, the bigger the guest, obviously the busier they are, the more requests they're gonna get. You need to stand out. You need to separate yourself from the pack and you have to do that within two sentences because people are going to spend seconds looking at your email, not minutes. My podcast and my podcast is a woman based podcast about women in the podcasting industry and what podcasts they're listening to. And I have had males reach out to me and say, Hey, I want to be on your podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> Hey, clearly you didn't listen to one thing or read one iota about my podcast. You're not my people. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for sliding into my DMs. And when I do get a woman in the podcasting industry, what I do very strategically is I schedule 
a coffee and chat. And in that coffee and chat, I don't talk anything about podcasting. I want to see how they communicate. I want to see how they engage with me. I am a whole mood and some people can't vibe with me. I think that's a great way to go about it. I've recently basically made it a rule now. I used to do it sporadically where I thought I'd like to get to know this person a bit more first. Now I've made it a rule. So I, I have a 15 minute conversation with them on Zoom. I basically say, well, tell me what's going on in your world. Tell me a little bit about you. So I want to get to know them, give them an opportunity to get to know me. If we really click and if they're a good fit for the podcast, then I'll say, okay, I'd love to get you on the podcast. Here's the process from here. Is that okay? And usually that, that will lead on to their guest appearance. In the cases where I've said, well, I don't think your topic is a real good fit. So some of those relationships have actually blossomed simply because I've taken the time to talk to that person, get to know them. They've had the opportunity to get to know me. We've found something in common. It's not the podcast topics. They're not a fit for the podcast, but we have found something in common that starts a relationship that could lead somewhere else. So I think that's a really great part of the process. And it's, it actually saves a lot of time. A lot of people might say, well, that, that's going to take a lot of time to have that conversation with everybody. Not everybody will take up that invitation. And for the people that do, it's well worth investing that time. There you have it. What some fellow podcast hosts value in their guests, what we all value in our guests, of course, what we expect of our guests, and how we begin to create a phenomenal guest experience right from the first contact. Thanks for listening to this episode of Tales of Marketing Transformation. Follow the show to be reminded of new episodes so you never miss out. Leave a review as well because reviews help us get found and it helps us get out there to people this information might help. Speaking of people, this information might help. If you know someone that is in that category, then please share this episode with them. Go to talesofmarketingtransformation.com to join the Marketing Transformation community and there you'll get access to a free gift that my team and I put together for you. It's the Marketing Master Mini Class. It's designed to give you everything you need to transform your marketing into a human-centered, relationship-focused growth engine. And if you have a podcast or you're thinking of starting a podcast or perhaps you want to go on a podcast tour, appear as a guest on other people's podcasts, then reach out to me to see how I might be able to help you Break down any barriers that you have getting in the way of building your sustainable visibility, professional credibility, and most importantly, that deep connection with your dream clients, your dream audience. I'm Jürgen Strauss from Innova Biz. Until our next episode of Tales of Marketing Transformation, stay awesome and let's make marketing human again. Thanks for coming on this journey with Tales of Marketing Transformation. Join us next week for another fabulous episode. For episode resources, visit www.talesofmarketingtransformation.com. Stay connected by subscribing at talesofmarketingtransformation.com forward slash subscribe.